Now that we've generated our class diagram, we can begin reverse engineering some codes. Let's start off by creating a new folder. And creating our class files. So the first class is our super class arrow. We don't need a package. As you can see, our arrow has three variables. They're called tip coordinates, tail coordinates, and arrowhead. And they're the double array. And a double array for the tail coordinates. And an integer for the arrowhead. Let's default this to 10. And we also have our method. It returns nothing. And that's that. Now we need to create our constructor because we'll be modifying the values of these. The constructor is simply the name of the class followed by brackets like so. So I'll be creating two constructors. One that takes in the coordinates only, and another one that takes in the coordinates and allows you to adjust the size of the arrowhead. So let's begin by taking the coordinates. It might be a bit annoying for the user to construct a double array every time to use this class object. So let's just break down the parameters to be single doubles like this. Tip of x. Double tip y, double tail x, and double tail y. At this point, you might want to change your mind about using a double array and just simply using four doubles. But for now, let's just stick with the UML diagram. To access the variable over here, you use this keyword followed by the name, and we're going to be constructing a new double array with values of tip x and tip y. And the same goes for the tail coordinates. And now we're going to copy this and create our second constructor that allows the user to also modify the arrowhead size. It's convention to use the same name for the parameter as the variable that we want to modify. So in this case, I want to be I want to modify the value for arrowhead size. So I name the parameter arrowhead size. But it will also work if you change this to any other thing. So ASDF must equals ASDF. So now all we need to do is make the draw arrow function. First, we need to decide how to draw the arrow. I think we'll be using JavaFX. So first, let's create an entry point file. And since we're using JavaFX, it extends application. The main method is optional. What we really need is the public start point. Its parameter is a stage. And it's overriding default behavior for application. Don't forget to import the necessary imports. So let's set the title for this stage. Let's create the default scene. Let's use a group. And let's create a canvas to draw stuff on. I 
ideally we'd scale this according to the user's inputs but for now let's just hard code the size finally to draw on the canvas we need a graphics context and since we'll be drawing 2d we'll need to get the 2d context Now we need to add the canvas to root. And we set root as a default scene. And finally, we let our main stage show itself. Now that we know we'll be using JavaFX, we need to also gain access to the graphics context. One way to do it is to take it as a parameter of the method, or we can also set it as one of the variables for this class. I'll be choosing the second option. And again, you use the this keyword. And now we have access to the graphics context. Finally, we can start drawing. I've already done the codes earlier, so I'll just be pasting them in now. Import all the necessary packages. And now we can test our class. Let's create an instance of it. Let's not bother setting the arrowhead size. And let's call the draw arrow method. And finally, let's test our application. As we can see, an arrow is drawn properly. Though it'd be a bit annoying to have to call the method every time you create a class, so let's automate that. In our constructor, we simply call the method as so. This will automatically call draw arrow every time an instance of this object is created. So let's test to see if that's true. And it is. So now let's create our subclasses. This extends from arrow. It has an integer called tail size. Let's default this to 10. And we have a method that returns nothing that's called pen tail. We'll need to create the constructors. And again, I'll be using single doubles for the coordinates.
Finally, we can now put this into our superclass. So remember, arrow is our superclass. And we can access its constructor by using the super keyword. There is another constructor in arrow, so we need to make another constructor here. which uses the other super constructor. Finally, we also want a constructor that can adjust our tail size. And for this, we use the this keyword to access that variable. Now again, we have to create our append tail method. I've already created the codes earlier on, and I'll be pasting that in. Again, import all the necessary imports. And what this does is, it creates a red tail. So let's test it out. Let's create a new instance of tail arrow 1. Let's make this a bit slanting. Or let's put this above the, our older arrow. Invoke the method to append the tail and let's try running again now, as you can see we have a second arrow with a red tail and again it might be annoying to have to call this again and again so let's put that into our constructor Finally, we can create our third tail arrow. The process is the same. It's just a different append tail method. And I already have it created. So I'll paste everything in. Finally, we can again test it out. And let's put this even below, even further below our arrows. Let's run the application. And we can see we have three arrows. There's a typo.
Let's run that again. And we have our three arrows. The normal arrow, the one with the red tail, and the one with the blue tail. Now it's not a good idea to hard code the coordinates into this. So let's improve this a little bit by taking inputs from an external data file. Again, I've already created the codes before and I'll just be pasting them in. And this is what we get when running the application now. This is generated from this data file. As you can see, you have two sets of coordinates and we generated two arrows. We could also implement logic to choose what type of arrows we want to draw.